Hey, you had a pretty big second half, fourth quarter especially. What was kind of working for you mm. there late? And I guess how do you kind of get that going a little earlier in the game? Uh, the first play of the drive, actually, um, I missed the block on 51, and he tackled easily. That could have been a big play, but then coach called uh, one of the plays that I should get the ball on. So I just went execute. I ran the route, and I seen the wide open grass. So I just took advantage of it. Matt threw me a nice ball, and we just kept the series rolling. So I mean, it was really all up to coach's play call. So I'm just glad he gave me the opportunity. Matt threw me the ball, and just made the best out of it. Go ahead, Parrish. Yeah, we saw you burst onto the scene there in the fourth quarter. Were you targeted before the fourth quarter, or was did that just kind of all come at you as a rush? Um, I mean, yeah, it just all came came at me. I mean, I, honestly, I wasn't thinking about it the whole game. I knew that it, it'll come. I didn't know when, but I knew when it did. I just make the most out of it. So, I mean, like I said, I just kept playing the whole hard the whole game, blocking as hard as I want to catch the ball. So that was it, pretty much. Did you get uh, injured a little bit at the end of the game? Yeah, I uh, just like my back like turned a little weird, so that was about it. It just hurt for a bit, it was sore, but I'm good. Go ahead, Nick. I think you had more yards on Saturday than you did in any game in four years at Temple. Just did you expect to be able to produce this quickly? Uh, yeah, honestly, I did. I mean. I've been working real hard all camp to prove to my teammates and the coaches that I can go out there and make these plays. So, I honestly, I wasn't really surprised that I made the play. It was because I've been doing it all camp. So, it's, I know that if I do it in practice, it'll correlate to the game. So, I'm just going to keep working and just keep proving it to my teammates and coaches. Go back and Nate. Along similar lines there, what were some of the bigger differences just in style of play, gameplay between between playing at Temple and playing a big SEC game? Uh, I mean, the people, like I said, the people are just bigger. You have four or five star players that are just great players and they know they're smart. So, I mean, I don't know. Like when I went out there, I wasn't really nervous. I mean, I've been playing, this is like my fourth, fifth year starting pretty much at tight end, the tight end position. So, I don't know. It just felt really normal to me just going out there. I wasn't even thinking about that we were playing the number five team in the country. I was just going out there and just playing ball, honestly. Go ahead, Nick. Back in December and January, how seriously did you consider going pro and kind of what swayed you to choose grad transferring instead of that? Uh, honestly, I really didn't think about uh, going pro. Um, I just I wanted to go somewhere where I was wanted and where I would be used. and be able to showcase my skills and I knew that coming here with Coach Kiffin would be the best opportunity for me. So, yeah. What was Lane's sales pitch for you? Um, honestly, it wasn't even Coach uh, Kiffin's sales pitch. It was just the notability of knowing that I, I had uh, he had Harrison Bryant last year. I actually got an opportunity to talk with him before I committed or decided to come here. So, I mean, that helped a lot and just hearing about Coach Kiffin um, Coach Levy, Coach Levy coached at UCF last year where um, we played them, so I got an opportunity to see his offense up close and personal when we played them. And they scored like 60 points on us, so I mean, it was kind of a no brainer to come here and play for him. David, David go ahead. Yeah, can you? We still. Uh... Walking on back in Casey Gallup getting an action, action cut ball uh, against Florida. And just uh, curious what your observations have been on Casey as well as, uh, as, well as Chase. Honestly, uh, I'm really proud of both of them. They've both been coming along real well. Casey, Casey's a speedster, and Chase is more of a powerhouse in the run game. So, I mean, they've both been working really hard. We're all really close, honestly. I've, like all the tight ends, we all hang out with each other. So, I mean, they're going to be great, great players for us too. So I'm going to keep helping them with things that they need and they help me with things that I need and that we just keep each other level-headed. Go back to Nate. Was Saturday the best you'd seen Matt play be it scrimmage, practice, game, anything? Um, Honestly, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really know. If that's the best I've seen him, but I mean, he played he played extremely extremely well. I, I couldn't have asked for anything better. He played tough. 
he was running the ball, scrambling when he was getting pressured. He was trying to sling the rock. And you could just see his leadership on the sidelines. I mean, I honestly wouldn't have, have rather have any other quarterback. I mean, I, I love Matt. I love playing for him. I love playing for Elijah, Drum, everybody. So, yeah. How is Matt's leadership style? Uh, it's, I mean, he's not, he's like me. He's not really of a talker, but he he does it by action. I mean, he talks when he needs to talk, but he, he is a great leader. I mean, from my perspective, everybody looks up to him and just everybody wants to follow behind him, follow his lead. Go ahead, Matt. Kenny, you, as a transfer, you've been through that process. You know how it is. Um, so speaking for guys like Otis, who's having a weight, um, kind of put yourself in those shoes. How tough is it to see for a teammate knowing that the uncertainty is already there being transferred and then have to wait for even more confirmation or allowance to play? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that topic, it just, it really hurts me to, like, think about it all the time because Otis is one of the closest people I've got with since I've been here. So just to see how hard he's worked since January and now it's time to play ball, he can't even play. So, I mean, I just feel for him. I feel for Springer, Jacob Springer, one of our Navy transfers. I feel for him too. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it just is what it is. I hope that they clear him soon enough. I'm, I'm really praying for him that it happens. And I, it just makes me feel terrible because I know all the hard work he's been putting in since January. Go ahead, Parrish. You, you mentioned Springer there. What, what have you seen from him in camp? Uh, a lot. I mean, he flies around. He's a he's a great player. He's one of the dudes that I've been hanging out with the most, honestly, too. So, um, he he's on scout team right now. He goes hard. He's on punt return. He's on every scout team, busting his tail, and he's on defense, busting his tail. Scout defense, busting his tail too. So it's just great to see that he's not letting him not playing negatively imp impact his um, ability to get better this year. At the same time, so. I'm proud of him for that too, for sure.